This is Aparna Lakaraju from the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So far in this tutorial, Claire Mitchell and Debashi Sinha have made a very strong case for disrupted autophagy and lysosome function in AMD. My goal over the next 15 minutes or so is to discuss the cell biology of the autophagy lysosome pathway in relation to AMD. The RPE is a highly metabolically active tissue and one of its major functions is the daily phagocytosis and degradation of shed photoreceptor outer segments. Because the RPE is also post-mitotic, it needs to minimize the accumulation of cellular debris by e efficient autophagy. Over a lifetime, inefficiencies in clearance pathways lead to the accumulation of vitamin A metabolites in the formation of lipofusin bisretinoids within RPE lysosomes. A hallmark of AMD is the accumulation of cholesterol-rich deposits called drusen above and beneath the RPE. Studies show that lipofusin bisretinoids also cause cholesterol accumulation within the RPE in models of inherited macular degenerations. We have reported this in the ABCA4 knockout mouse model of Stargardt's disease, and more recently, Gus Aguirre's group has confirmed this in their K9 model of Best disease. This ex excess cholesterol in the RPE interferes with autophagy and lysosome function and leads to the formation of subretinal deposits. So these studies, along with those discussed by Claire and Debashesh, clearly suggest that inefficient autophagy and lysosome function causes the accumulation of cellular debris, which in turn further compromises clearance mechanisms, setting in motion a feed-forward cycle that eventually culminates in RPE dysfunction. To tease out where the blocks in the autophagy lysosome pathway might be and how we can therapeutically target them, I would like to focus on three major factors that regulate clearance mechanisms. First, the biogenesis or the formation of autophagosomes and lysosomes, which is regulated by the mTOR TFEB pathway. Second, once formed, these lysosomes have to be transported to specific locations by microtubules and molecular motors. And finally, they have to fuse with other organelles such as phagosomes or autophagosomes to digest and recycle the material or fuse with the plasma membrane for lysosome exocytosis. For each of these regulators, let us first look at evidence that they are dysregulated in AMD or in lysosomal storage diseases or neurodegenerative diseases, both of which share common features with AMD, and where we can find points of intervention or therapeutic targets to shore up lysosome function in AMD. First up, the mTOR TFEB pathway. As Claire and Debashish have discussed, the mechanistic target of rapamycin, or, or mTOR1, senses nutrient and stress levels and integrates multiple stimuli to control autophagy and lysosome function. Active mTOR1 is present on the lysosomal membrane where it phosphorylates the MITF-TFE family of transcription factors called TFEB and TFE3 to keep them inactive in the cytosol. When cells need to increase their degradative capacity, mTOR1 is inhibited, which relieves the block on TFEB and TFE3. Upon dephosphorylation, they translocate to the nucleus to induce the transcription of lysosomal and autophagy genes. In recent years, this cascade has emerged as a master regulator of clearance pathways in the cell. Studies in several disease models have shown that overexpressing TFEB using viral vectors can help clear deposits in neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and lysosomal storage disorders such as Pompe disease. TFEB overexpression also protects from diet-induced obesity as shown here in liver section stained for oil red O. In terms of AMD therapeutics, this raises several questions. The most important of which is is TFEB a druggable target? In other words, can we find small molecules to activate TFEB that can translate to human therapeutics? Michael White's group at UD Southwestern recently identified three such compounds in a high throughput screen. One of these is the clinically approved cardiac glycoside digoxin, which activates sodium potassium ATPase mediated ER calcium release, and this in turn leads to lysosomal calcium release via mucolipin 1. Increased calcium activates calcineurin, which dephosphorylates TFEB, allowing it to translocate to the nucleus. In mice fed a high-fat diet, oral administration of digoxin activates TFEB, decreases lipid deposits, and P62 levels. 
These data suggest that the TFEB pathway can be targeted by small molecules to improve cellular clearance. Now let us look at the second factor that regulates clearance, which is trafficking. Lysosomes and other organelles are transported on dynamic microtubules via kinesin and dynein motors to get them to the proper location for their function. David Williams' group has shown that defects in kinesin motors, such as loss of the kinesin light chain 1 in mice, prevents transport of outer segment containing phagosomes. Impaired degradation of outer segments gives rise to pathology reminiscent of AMD, including accumulation of lipid deposits under the RPE, as seen here in the top right panel, and complement activation indicated by increased C3 immunofluorescence in red in the lower panels. Recruitment of molecular motors is also re regulated by post-translational modifications of tubulin. One such modification is acetylation, which occurs on stabilized microtubules and alters organelle traffic. We have shown that in polarized porcine primary RPE cultures, acetylated tubulin in green is mainly in the primary cilium, as shown in the top right panel. But in cells with the lipofusin based retinoid A2E, there is an increase in acetylated tubulin throughout the cell. A similar situation is found in the RPE of the ABCA4 knockout mouse model of Stargardt's disease, which have higher levels of acetylated tubulin shown here in red compared to the age match wild type mice. We have found that this increase in tubulin acetylation interferes with multiple steps of autophagy. In the ABCA4 knockout mice, autophagosome biogenesis measured by levels of lipidated LC3 shown in the lower left-hand side are decreased. So is the clearance of autophagic substrates, such as P62, shown in green in the lower right-hand side of the slide. How does this occur? In the ABCA4 knockout RPE, we have found that excess lysosomal cholesterol that accumulates due to lipofusin based retinoids also traps bis-monoacylglycerophosphate, or BMP, an anionic lipid that is a cofactor of acid sphingomyelinase, the enzyme that hydrolyzes sphingomyelin to ceramide. Increase in ceramide inhibits histone deacetylase 6, or HDAC6, the major enzyme that deacetylates microtubules. This leads to an accumulation of stable microtubules and prevents the trafficking of autophagosomes. So we asked, will inhibiting acid sphingomyelinase restore autophagosome transport in the RPE? To test this, we performed live imaging of autophagosome trafficking in primary adult RPE cultures transfected with GFP-tagged LC3 and starved for two hours to induce autophagy. In controlled RPE, autophagosomes move long distances along well-defined tracks, but in cells with A2E, the, these tracks were shorter and the autophagosomes underwent tethered random movements indicative of constrained motility. When we tr treated these um, cells with A2E with the clinically approved antidepressant desipramine, which is known to inhibit acid sphingomyelinase, we were able to completely restore long-range trafficking of autophagosomes, and this in turn restored autophagic flux. Trafficking of lysosomes is not only important for meeting up with phagosomes and autophagosomes, but also for membrane repair by lysosome exocytosis. We have found that lysosome exocyto exocytosis comes into play especially during complement attack in the RPE. When assembly of the membrane attack complex causes an increase in intracellular calcium, which acts as a signal for lysosomes to fuse with the plasma membrane. This is mediated by the synaptotag MIN7, a lysosomal calcium sensor which facilitates interactions between T snares on the plasma membrane and V snares on lysosomes to allow fusion. Now, only lysosomes that are already docked at the plasma membrane are able to exocytose, and in RPE with bis retinoids, we find that acetylated microtubules transport lysosomes towards the nucleus, effectively preventing them from participating in membrane repair. Here, lysosomes are in green and the microtubules are in red, and you can see that in cells with the bis retinoid A2E, um, lysosomes are constrained perinuclearly. To perform live imaging of lysosome exocytosis in the RPE, we use synaptotagmin 7 tra tagged with a pH-sensitive GFP called fluorin. In the low pH of lysosomes, the fluorescence is quenched, and only when the lysosomes fuse with the plasma membrane, the tag fluoresces at pH 7. 
Here, using TERF microscopy, which can monitor events within 100 nanometers of the plasma membrane, we found that lysosomes exit cytose within seconds of exposure to complement, as seen here by this burst of GFP fluorescence. However, in cells with A2E, we saw very little exocytosis because fewer lysosomes are docked near the plasma membrane. One consequence of decreased lysosome exocytosis after complement attack is an increase in intracellular calcium, which could lead to mitochondrial damage. In the ABCA4 knockout mouse, due to decreased lysosome exocytosis, we observed increased mitochondrial fragmentation as evidenced by decreased expression of OPA1 or optic atrophy 1, a protein that is involved in maintaining mitochondrial architecture. What about the final regulator, fusion between lysosomes and other organelles and the plasma membrane? This is regulated by vesicle or V snares such as BAMP8, which interact with target or T snares such as syntaxin 4 to undergo conformational changes and bring membranes together. Tom Wimes' group has shown the expression and polarized distribution of different T snares in the RPE with syntaxin 1A and 1B on the apical plasma membrane, syntaxin 2 at the tight junction, and syntaxin 4 near the tight junction and at the basal membrane. This location of syntaxin 4 is interesting because it is the main T snare implicated in lysosome exocytosis. And in keeping with this distribution of syntaxin 4, our data show that lysosomes exocytose both at the apical and basal sides of the RPE in response to complement attack. Now the situation with V snares is much less clear and very little is known about these in the RPE. Interestingly, Bellabio's group showed that in lysosomal storage diseases, excess cholesterol keeps V snares in a locked conformation, preventing them from interacting with target snares. This results in decreased fusion of lysosomes with autophagosomes and other organelles and suggests that this could also occur in RPE with increased cholesterol. In conclusion, from a cell biologist's perspective, there are three important determinants of lysosome function. Biogenesis, re regulated by the mTOR TFEB pathway, transport, regulated by microtubules and molecular motors, and fusion, regulated by snares and TRIP-ML1, as Claire has discussed. Promising small molecule activators of the TFEB pathway have been identified, including digoxin. We have shown that restoring microtubule dynamics by inhibiting acid sphingomyelinase improves autophagy and lysosome function in the RPE. But when it comes to fusion machinery and how these regulate clearance in the RPE, much remains to be understood. Claire Debashish and I would like to thank current and former members of our labs, our funding sources, and the Ryan Initiative for Macular Research for giving us this opportunity. Thank you.